What is up guys and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about how to show up at a location that you're going to shoot an interview in and really get the best interview that you can. So this is like a run and gun situation, maybe if you're a solo filmmaker, a solo content creator, how can you go into an environment, be in that environment, embrace the location and get the best out of the person that you're interviewing, the subject that you're interviewing or the subjects that you're interviewing. Interviews are a cornerstone, a main stake in every single piece of documentary. They kind of are what the story's built around, you know, these people telling their story and you really want to get the best interviews. You want to get the raw emotions of these people talking to the camera and that requires a certain uh, skill set. A couple weeks ago, I was creating content for a nonprofit here in Houston. I'm going to play the video that I created for them. It's used for their, their social media and it got a lot of engagement. Then I'll talk about some of the tips that I use not only to shoot this interview and not, not all of them apply to this interview, but some of the, the tips that I use for interviews in general when I am in a run and gun situation um, and I'm oftentimes by myself. So without further ado, let me play this video and then we'll talk about the tips right after. Well, I, I, I was born and I'm here <laughs> and there's been 93 years in between. 93 years. 93, I was married for 70 years. Mm -hmm. My dear wife passed away two years ago. Oh, okay. And uh, just before I started the YMCA here in Houston. It's been a pleasure being here every four, I go four times a week here and I donate my time at a food bank on the fifth day. Low impact aerobics. The class is so congenial and I know everybody in the class by name. We greet each other in the morning when we arrive. Teacher Analia uh, Alberti is very, very good. She's the best you have. I love work with the seniors. They have a lot of energy. They always have a smile. They always enjoy what they are doing, and uh, I love that one. George is amazing. George is uh, uh, one, one of that special seniors that we have. All of them are great, but George needs to help, needs to be involved, needs to be in the things. That's George. I love the why, and I will keep coming as long as I can. All right, so that was George, and George was an amazing character, full of energy, full of life, and it really reflected through the lens. And that's a key component to getting great interviews, is to have great characters that are able to tell their stories really easily on camera, because being able to speak to camera is a skill set in itself, and I'm certainly learning that as I make these videos. The more practice you have, the better you get at it. When I approach people to interview, I generally like to be, try to be as comfortable as possible with them, make them feel at ease. And I think one of the best ways you can do that, and my number one tip, is to go into a situation first without a camera. Go in and try to meet people, whether it be for five to 10 minutes to 30 minutes, however much time you have, try to spend some time in that environment that you're gonna film in and get to know the people there. Get to know the space, kind of feel the energy there. Maybe build some, build some banter with some of the people there and um, start to feel the stories that are there. And then once you've identified your character, try to get to talk to that person a little bit more before you actually do the interview. So maybe do a pre-interview. Don't get all the questions out of them, but kind of just get the conversation going a little bit. Put them at ease, obviously make sure that you can film them, get their permission. And then once you've had that banter built up a little bit, then I would say go ahead and get your equipment and start to film B-roll. And then after that, I'll shoot the interview. All right, number two tip is kind of along those same lines. Um, one thing that I've noticed when filming people in an environment like a documentary, they're not really expecting a lot of people to film or they don't know what to expect when it comes to the things that you're gonna be using to film them. The, minim the more minimal equipment you have, the better. And this is because it's intimidating when you have a lot of equipment. When you come in with a bunch of lights, with a big camera, cinema camera, monitor, big mic, the more people, the more people you have, the bigger the equipment, the more intimidating you are. So if you can have a minimal amount of equipment that's gonna produce the top quality that you need or the highest quality that you need, do that. So, you know, minimally, to me, I like to use, I like to use a cinema camera. I'm using the FX6, which is able to, you know, allow me to put my mic on the camera for the most part, or I can put a, a lava layer onto it, um, a wireless lava layer onto it. I can have a, a decent sized monitor and it's relatively small compared to some bigger camera packages. I don't really try to build it up too much, especially in documentary type of environments where I'm really trying to be as nimble as possible. I'm trying to you know, move around the space comfortably and 
not be too noticed. I want to be more of like a fly on the wall. Um, and this is kind of, this kind of relates to cinema verite when you really are just there to film things as they are. You're just trying to document the real life situations of, or the real life environment of a situation. You don't want to really interject your presence on it too much. So my second tip is to film as, with as minimal equipment as possible to get the highest quality. So whenever you're having a conversation with somebody, oftentimes you don't really want to have a lot of dead space because it's uncomfortable. That's kind of opposite when you're doing an interview. You actually want to let the answer breathe a little bit. So whenever you ask someone something, give them space to have a little bit of time after their answer to reflect on it, maybe add to it, maybe expand on it, because oftentimes in that space, you get some really genuine responses. So for example, if I asked you, how are you doing today? You may say, I'm doing good. Now, if I let it breathe for a little bit, I'd say anywhere from like three to five seconds, you don't want to go too long. The other person may feel the need to actually, you know, expand on that and elaborate a little bit more because they have the same feeling of not wanting it to be awkward. You know, they want to fill the space with words or they'll ask you, they might ask you, uh, or they might smile or do something to say, is that, all you, is, that, is that all you wanted from me? In reality, you're trying to get more information out of them um, and it is as comfortable as a way as possible. So don't let it go too long. Don't let it go for like 10 seconds, but do let it breathe a little bit um, and, and allow them to expand on it. And really, when you're asking a question, obviously you wanna to listen to what they're saying and respond back um, in an empathetic and uh, a very, in a way that shows that you're listening to them. Because empathy is often a huge uh, trait that you need to exercise when you're interviewing people. You want to relate to them and you want to show that you're listening. Okay, and my last tip is to get good audio. I mean, the audio is really one of the most important things. You probably heard this before in terms of films is to, you know, you really wanna have solid audio, even sometimes over the visuals. So what does that mean? Well, that means to have the best audio that you can when it comes to equipment. So whether that be a lavalier mic or a boom mic or a shotgun mic, um, get the best quality mic you can. I recommend if the person that you're interviewing is gonna be moving around, um, set them up with the lav mic. Go ahead and put a lav mic on them as one source of audio, then ideally you wanna have a second source of audio and that's the boom mic. I would actually flip it. I would actually try to get the higher quality boom mic um, and that lavalier second. So if you're doing an interview with them and you need to only use a boom mic or a shotgun mic, make sure that you're close to that person with the camera because you wanna capture the best audio you can with that boom mic and oftentimes you need to be really close with them to get the best quality audio. If you're further away with the boom mic, you're just gonna catch or, caps, capture a bunch of other sound that you don't wanna capture. Um, having the lavalier mic is a great way to get backup audio in, in the case that you can't get perfect audio with the boom mic, but I definitely recommend to get a shot with a, a decently wide angle lens, maybe like a 24 millimeter, and get an intimate shot with them and have that boom mic maybe on top of the, the camera if you can, if you can do it directly into the camera like I did with uh, George here with the FX6. Um, I actually put the, the shotgun mic onto the camera directly and putting into the uh, audio inputs uh, of the, the FX6. And fortunately with the cinema camera, you have those XLR inputs, which are high quality, you know, pro level audio inputs. Now, if you don't have XLR inputts on your camera, you're gonna need to get an external recorder, or I highly recommend that you get an external recorder, such as the Zoom H4n or another Zoom type of um, device or any other type of high quality external recording device that can record high quality wave audio files. Uh, it's probably gonna be your best bet. And then you could sync that in post. But again, audio is hugely important. Uh, you wanna make sure you do the interview in a place that doesn't have a lot of sound and uh, a lot of echoes. Uh, if you have the opportunity to put a sound blanket down, that's great too, to kind of re reduce some of the, the echoey noise in that space. Um, and then kind of along these same lines, when it comes to doing an interview by yourself, I think you can shoot it a number of ways, but there's two ways that I generally like to shoot it. And that's one, either I put the camera on sticks and I put the camera fairly close to them if I have you know, a boom mic that I'm trying to utilize on the camera or I set up a boom um, like I have here, which is actually on a C stand and the boom's over my head. And uh, it's, it's going into the camera, but it's obviously not connected directly to the camera um, in terms of the mic's not on the camera. But in a situation where I'm running and gunning and I have the mic directly onto the camera, 
um, into the mount onto the camera. I like to set the tripod close to them, like I said, with 24 millimeter lens. And maybe I'll step to the side of the camera so they can talk to me, or I'll have someone else step to the side of the camera so they can talk to them and conduct the interview. And um, that way the subject's not looking directly into the camera, but they're looking off camera, more of like a documentary style feel. Um, in the case that I can't, and I, if I'm just really, really trying to run and gun and I'm trying to be as nimble as possible, and I don't even have a tripod with me, then there's another way you can shoot this. And that's, you wanna just hold the camera and have the conversation. Now this is tricky because you need to frame up your shot and you can't move too much obviously once you have the shot framed up. But this can really be a great technique in terms of getting someone to feel comfortable with the conversation that you're having with them. And this takes practice though. So for example, I might have the FX6 here um, on my show, next to my chest and I'm just talking to the person like I'm talking to the camera here and I'm just looking at the beginning of my shot to frame it up. After I have it framed up, I'm just really looking at that person the whole time having the conversation and I may glance down every now and then just look at the screen. Or maybe I have it on my shoulder mount on my shoulder and I can kind of just glance at the monitor every now and then. But that's a great way to just have a conversation with someone and not focus on the camera too much. Uh, again, it's something that you need to practice with, but it can be a really great technique in terms of running gun documentary style shooting. Okay, that's my four tips for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I highly recommend looking at Mark Bone's channel for other documentary tips. Some of these tips come from him um, and some of these come from just general experience with the kind of work that I've done. So. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Continue to create things, continue to work on documentary films. I'm doing that myself. I'm still young in the process and I know the only way I'm gonna get better is if I keep doing it and I'm gonna grow. So I'll see you next video and I hope you guys have a great day. I love you guys.